Joining us now on results in the state of sports betting, DraftKings CEO Jason Robbins. J Jason, thanks for joining us. I want to start with your outlook. Um, you know, you you beat, and it seemed like this. A lot of this was driven by the unit economics, which you described as outstanding. But what is behind your higher outlook for for Q3? You know, I really think it has a lot to do with the culmination of the last several quarters, really the last, you know, several years of effort. Um, so it's a great quarter, but a lot's gone into it. First, the product has dramatically improved uh, year over year. Uh, we've also continued to really optimize our marketing. Uh, and also, I think we've just done a lot of things to clean up the customer experience, remove friction, and create a really good, uh, smooth experience and UI for our customers. Still a lot of work to be done, um, but I think all that's culminated in us seeing strong engagement, retention, customer acquisition has been way up on the year with a decrease in CAC. So just a lot of really good tailwinds when you look at the metrics of the business right now. And in terms of the metrics of the business, I think it's interesting the way you've been rolling out. Uh, you know, obviously you have different strength in different sports. It seems like baseball was a sign of strength. But also you have these new potential markets. I'm curious what your outlook is um, for access to new markets and also potentially new betters. Are you more focused on gaining market share or in building the addressable market? Well, I think right now at the stage we're at, it has to be both. Um, obviously, you know, the, the TAM, the total addressable market is still growing rapidly. New states are coming on, new customers are coming, even in our oldest states, which remember, even our oldest, oldest states are only about four or five years old. It's not that old. Um, we're still seeing robust customer acquisition and revenue growth. So I think it's a combination of both. Still a lot of TAM, uh, I think, to be developed. And uh, I think doing that in the right way, getting you know, more states opened up, all very important. But also we feel like we've really been able to compete for share by improving our product and honing our customer experience over the past year. And we have a lot more exciting things. The team is laser focused now because remember upcoming, you know, Q2 is great, but this is the most important time of year coming up for us. So, you know, everybody is locked in and ready to go for this fall. Of course, we have the NFL season starting just around the yeah. corner. Um, one of the things I've been watching as I cover the streaming space so closely is how the rise of streaming, and now we're hearing even more about ESPN going direct to consumer. We just heard um, from Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav talking about his interest in potentially doing more streaming of sports. That means more fragmentation. And I'm, wor I'm wondering if you're at all worried about fragmentation making it harder for people to find the sports that they want to watch and therefore want to bet on. Is it making it um, a sort of another challenge to get people to bet on sports? You know, I don't think so. I think that people who are, you know, avid sports fans, they're going to follow where the sports go. Um, but you're right that fragmentation will have some effect on the media market. I actually think it's probably a positive effect because more competition for ad dollars is a good thing. Um, but I definitely think that customers who are engaged and into sports, they're going to go find ways to watch sports they want. I also think that, you know, this stuff sort of naturally takes care of itself. The most important thing to the leagues and to the players long term is that they have an audience and that audience has access to their content. Um, so, you know, I know from just my experience talking to the various sports leagues that that's a key factor they consider. And they're very careful to make sure that, um, you know, the, the partners that they're working with uh, are not only able to pay the money that they need, but also able to generate and at least maintain the audience. And, um, you know, I think that they understand that very well. So I'm confident that audience will be able to be there and will be able to find the sports that they want to watch. What's the potential upside from all of this streaming? Will we have a day where I'll be able to turn on my Apple TV, watch a game, and bet through my Apple TV? Will there be integration into streaming? You know, that's certainly a possibility. With mobile devices, it's so easy for you to do it in your handheld. So um, it's almost like for, for a lot of customers, is it that much different? Um, but I absolutely think the integration uh, and, and the ability to have a betting experience that's tailored to the streaming customer, it, it's just much more significant because in, unlike a linear channel, you can create all sorts of different streams. You can create streams specifically tailored for betters. You can create streams in different languages. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do that just open up the audience more, make it a more engaging experience, experience for the people who are playing fantasy sports or betting on those games and really customize and tailor and personalize what the audience is looking for.